to 11 great hi everyone welcome to russian Bay baptist church this morning wherever you are what a strange situation we find ourselves in i never expected to be having you here in my study this morning but welcome come on in in so many ways it feels as if life's been turned upside down doesn't it and yet still we're church just the same we're just as much church today as we are as we have been for the last 150 odd years but um, we're scattered about the place but still no less church I want to say a special welcome to those who are only on audio who can't see us don't feel any less part of being part of this service will you please and um, I also want to point out the fact that in the link in the links that we sent out to you, um, there were some um, worship, some links to some worship music that Lynn's has specially chosen for this morning. So please do, after the service, take some time to listen to that, um, to those links and spend some time in worship. Um, I want to begin by reading, as we often do at the start of our services, um, some words from Psalm 121 says says this I lift my eyes to the mountain where does my help come from my help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth he will not let your foot slip he who watches over you will not slumber indeed he who watches over Israel will neither slumber or sleep isn't it good to know that none of this uh, nasty virus stuff has taken God himself by surprise and that he's in it with us. He's with us just the same as ever, loving you, caring for you, accepting you just as you are. I want to invite you to pray with me now. Father God, we come to you now your people scattered but no less your church for that we honor you we worship you and declare your greatness together today we know that you have not left us, that you are with us at all times of trouble as well as of joy and we lift our world to you a world in need a world brought together by a strange common danger in the form of a virus. We pray for leaders and governments everywhere, for wisdom and resources to do the right thing. In the we thank you for the medics and other key workers who are in the front line. Help us all to be gracious and supportive and to stop and do the right things. They are part in beating this virus. We pray for the weak and the vulnerable across the world. Many are already in desperate situations and now face this extra challenge. Together, we cry out to you for them, that they would know your presence, your peace and your intervention right now. And on this strange Mothering Sunday, we thank you for our mothers for their sacrifice and care. Help those of us for whom this is a difficult day for all sorts of reasons. Not full of flowers and chocolate as it is for some, but of sadness and maybe missing our mum. Be very close. And for the church here, right where we are, enable each one of us to really show your love where we are today and every day whether it's chatting to the neighbor over the fence fetching shopping giving someone a call may we make a difference and make your love known may your church rise up in the country today at such a time as this may we demonstrate your love and be a beacon for it well i must confess lord that it's hard to know exactly what to pray right now so let's pray. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together. Please join in if you know it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hazel's at the church. We're going to, we're going to go to her now. As Heather says, I am at the church because we want the church to be included as part of our worship. This building is not the church, but it is part of us as church. So we're going to, Heather's led us in some prayers this morning and we're going to um, have a, a reading and a sermon, a short message, um, and there's some hints at the end about things that we can do. So Neil's going to come and read for us this morning. Morning, everyone. Who is the greatest? They came to Capernaum when he was in the house. He asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child and had him stand among them. Taking him in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children into my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Thanks, Neil. In case you're wondering, it's only me, Neil and Drew at the church. There's nobody else here. So, and as, we, as we're home together all the time then, that's fine for us to be here. So that reading came from Mark chapter nine this morning. Who is the greatest? And so amidst all the, the changing that's going on in the world at the moment, we thought that we would carry on with our sermon series on spiritual habits, spiritual disciplines, a bit of routine in the weirdness and uncertainty at the moment. So last week, you'll recall that we focused on prayer. That was our spiritual habit, our spiritual discipline for last week was prayer. Um, and that seems so timely, actually, because we were heading into such a period of, of, un, of uncertainty and change. And we spent a lot of time as a community last week here at the church, praying together about the things that were important to us. This week's habit also seems so, so timely. It's one of those God incidents moments. Um, and it, the, the habit this week is on servanthood and service. And I think it's been interesting in the news all week, as we've seen things going on, that we've that a lot of the time, amongst all the, the busyness and the rush and the stress, there have been amazing examples of folks reaching out to others. So we're on servanthood this morning, and the reading is perhaps a strange one that you might think we chose. Perhaps we could have chosen um, Isaiah 53, where Jesus it describes Jesus as the suffering servant or other passages where maybe in Matthew's where it says about how when you go and look after the hungry and feed those and give clothes and water and that, that we perhaps we would have used that but I want to focus on who is the greatest this morning is what God laid on my heart. Now the disciples on the road that day weren't talking about servanthood, they weren't asking Jesus a question about servanthood. They were human, they were just like us, and they wanted to know who was the best, who was the most important, who was the greatest, because human essence, it means that a lot of the time, that's what we want to know. But Jesus, as he did so many times in his transformational, turning the world upside down way, turned the question on their head. So the end of Jesus' work was drawing to a close, and they were making their way to Capernaum, and then they were going to go to Judea and towards Jerusalem. And as they were journeying together, Jesus and his, and the, his friends, they were devoting, Jesus was devoting time to his disciples, trying to help them understand what was going to happen, and they were struggling to understand it, as you would imagine. Mark tells us that as they were walking along, the disciples, Jesus' closest friends, were arguing. 
I find that quite reassuring, really, that in a time when they were they were all stuck together, um, that they were not getting on in the best of ways. Their conversation was getting a little bit heated. They were perhaps winding each other up a little bit. Maybe that maybe that's something that we might be get used to as we're getting more and more isolated in the coming days. But Jesus heard that his friends were arguing. And his disciples were trying to get their head around the things that he was telling them, the conversations he was having with them. And some of that stuff was quite mind boggling. But in amongst all those important things that Jesus was telling them, Jesus was showing them, at that moment, in that day, what was at the forefront of their mind was, well, who is the greatest? Now, do you know, the disciples seem to know that perhaps they shouldn't have been arguing amongst themselves, that perhaps it wasn't the best thing to be doing because they were reluctant to admit that they were arguing. But Jesus heard them and he saw at that moment an opportunity to speak life to them. Now, in that ancient world in which Jesus and the disciples were in, children were regarded as pretty insignificant beings. If you were the person caring for the children, well, you were pretty insignificant too. But Jesus, as I say, the person who liked to transform things, who liked to turn things upside down, he decided to use, to, to use children, these, in, these seemingly insignificant children, to teach one of the most fundamental elements of faith. Jesus brought a child close to him and told the disciples that their job was to welcome, to receive and to serve that child. And that they needed to do this not just for their sake, but for their own as well. But not just for the child's sake, but for their own sake too. Jesus didn't destroy the idea of greatness when he was answering the disciples' question that day. But what Jesus did do was recognise that greatness encourages sometimes the worst sides of human nature. That sometimes if you're trying to be better, more important than somebody else, actually what you are getting is jealousy and pride and anger and a self-first approach. So Jesus wasn't saying you can't be great, he was trying not to encourage the, the jealousy, the pride and the anger. He was saying greatness is about serving, it's about humility. Jesus says that being great is about being willing to be last, about putting yourself in a position to serve others. It may be that there's not a need to serve, it may be that you can't serve, it may be that actually being first, being up front, being at the, do, leading on something, actually that's what you're meant to be doing. So being great is not about not doing those things, but it's about being willing and ready to not be the key. So when Jesus was talking, had that child in front of him on that day, he wasn't just talking about children. Just consider this for a moment. If you're prepared to serve children, then it's a really sacrificial thing to do because children very often have little to give you back in return. They, they can't pay you for what you do to, for them. They can't compensate you in any way for the act that you do for them. In fact, children, most of the time, don't even recognise when you're serving them. Do you know, when you're at home, if you've, if you've had a child around your house, they won't notice that you're going around picking things up. They just accept it. And often they won't even, and because they don't recognise it, they can't say thank you. So when Jesus is using the illustration of children, he's highlighting the sacrificial element of serving. Another part of servanthood is that we serve others, in that when we serve others, we can receive God. In being humble, in having humility, we can reflect Jesus. And Jesus was humility personified. So how might we become servants? I guess simply it's putting other people before ourselves. Putting other people before ourselves. But that's one of those statements that says a lot, but also says very little too. Because how can we put others first? What about putting others first puts us in conflict with other people who've got other things that they want doing too? So just this morning, I've got... 
I've got a few steps here that might help us. So in practicing the habit of servanthood, we might need to embrace our limitations. We might need to recognize that we are not supermen and superwomen. Do you know, human nature says, think, makes us think that we can do everything, but we can't. And it's not a weakness to admit that, but we can never have enough skills, enough knowledge or resources, and that includes time to do everything that we would want to do. And you know, if we try and do everything that's asked of us, everything that we want to do, then there's a possibility we might neglect some people. So servanthood, be realistic in the things that you can offer. In the last few days of the church, myself, Heather and the leadership team have thought of so many things that we could do in this current situation. But we're having to be realistic and we're having to be honest with ourselves. The things we want to do, we have to be able to sustain them. So we have to recognise that we have limitations. And, you know, if we make ourselves so busy in serving others, there might be a danger that we'll push God to the brink. We'll put him on the boundary of our lives and the things that we're doing. So to serve well, we need to accept that we are weak. We are not supermen and superwomen. Another thing about serving is that we need to be prepared for the mundane. Serving can be all sorts of things, and some of them are not attractive, are they? Here, when we do our holiday club at Rushmere, let's face it, we all get our leaders' packs and we eagerly look to the back of them to see who is our name down on the toilet cleaning rotor. It's not a thing that we want to do. We're really hoping our name's not there. Being servants, servants though, is about doing the mundane too. Sometimes I think we don't mind offering ourselves to do roles, but we do it going, please, please don't choose me to do that. In the John Altberg book, there's this line that says, authentic community is characterized perhaps more than anything else by mutual servanthood and submission. When Jesus said the first shall be last, the last shall be first and the least shall be great and the slave the greatest of all, he wasn't giving orders. He was simply describing the truth about God's kind of community and how different it looks from the way things generally work in the world. Let me say that sentence again. Authentic community is characterized perhaps more than anything else by mutual servanthood and submission. When Jesus said the last shall be first and the least shall be great and the slave the greatest of all, he wasn't giving orders. He was simply describing the truth about God's kind of community and how different it looks from the way things generally work in the world. I love that, God's kind of community. What does God's kind of community look like at the moment? Another form of service might be to allow ourselves to be interrupted. We all have plans, and this week those plans have been interrupted by things that we can anticipate, but still I suspect we have plans about what we intend to do every day. So another form of service, allow ourselves to be interrupted, allow our agenda to be overtaken by other people. Another way we can practice servanthood is by sometimes just being quiet, being still, holding our tongue, listening, not speaking. And, you know, I think in those moments when we, when we do those things where we don't speak out and maybe we don't, we, you know, hold back, even if it's something you disagree with, hold back if it's because sometimes we get more interested in talking about the issue rather than actually whether it bothers us or not. We just want to hear our own voice. In those moments of silence, we might be able to hear God's voice instead. And in those moments, he might break through our assumptions that we have about other people, about the world itself. And a final point about the way we could serve is by, so we could serve others by pointing them to Jesus. Maybe instead of telling the world, instead of telling people the things that are wrong, we tell them about the saviour of the world instead. 
Service is not a list of things that we can do, though in it we can discover things to do. It's not a code of ethics, but it's a way of living. I think a, a habit of servanthood sounds a much healthier way of living, a much healthier habit to have. And so this morning we haven't had our normal, we're not having our normal service and the service, I know, and I saw over the weeks, we'll develop what we can do here. This is our first time and hey, we're, we're, we're novices at it and we're going to learn. And we haven't had our normal family slot and we haven't had our normal song of worship this morning. Do go to that link that's on the email with the suggestion of songs from Lynn's, our worship leader. But I do want to give you something to, to take away to do today and in the days ahead. Something that whole families can do. Something that you can do whether you're young or whether you're much older. And, it, and serving at the moment is hard because for various reasons people are not meeting other people. You may not be able to go out and do things. And that's why I haven't focused on the doing things this morning because service isn't about doing. But if you can go out maybe you could serve somebody who's in the shop with you if there's one bag of pasta you know what let them have it but if you can't go out you can still serve so if you're on social media let's all try and post encouraging things this week and there's one and one suggestion i saw which i really liked which wasn't actually to do in response to the situation at the moment but we all know people we know people through church, we know family and friends. And so what I want you to do this week at some point is write the name or names of people that you know and love. And if you're really feeling creative, I want you to go and get your Lego out or your Play-Doh out or your pens or your paints, draw a picture of them, paint a picture, make a model of them. And I don't want lots of cardboard bottles of me, but you know, Heather would love it. But do some junk modelling, make, make an image of that person and put it somewhere in your home. And every time you go near, so don't put them in the broom cupboard out the way, put them somewhere where you go often, put them by the kitchen sink, put them next to the television, this person that you've made. And when you see that model, when you see that picture, pray for that person. And maybe if you can, phone them up, write them a letter, send them a card do something and remember that person. You'll be serving them so well in this time. And if you can do a picture, if you can do a model, if you can make something out of clay, Play-Doh, Lego, whatever it is, and you are on Facebook, send it to Rushmere Baptist Church Facebook page and we'll pop some of them up. And then we can pray for them and serve those people too. Let's keep being community together. Let's keep serving each other. I look forward to meeting you again very soon. I'll hand you back to Heather. Thanks, Hayes. What a great thing to do, to be able to, um, to, to really respond in this unusual times, to think out of the box about how we can serve each other, not only within the church, of course, but in our communities, about being salt and light where we are, about the difference we can make and making Jesus known by showing his love, um, declaring God's way, showing his love as our, as our church front line, and we're going to be living that out. Let me pray for you as we finish this week. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Will you please come back next week? Bear with us. We're just getting the hang of it. Um, but it's a really important part of our continuity as a church. Um, let me pray for you as we go and pray blessing on you. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those taking part in this service this morning. Those that started with us and have dropped out because of the technology. Those that couldn't make it in because they couldn't make it work. Whatever, Lord, we pray for everyone who is part of Rushmere this morning. That they would know you very close. I pray that your Holy Spirit would meet each person in their home or wherever they're watching. That they would sense your presence and know your peace that your Holy Spirit would do all that you want to do in and through them this week. Lord, may we know your presence and your peace at this time, each one. And now, the Lord, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you 
peace. Amen. Please remember to go to the links for the worship songs to spend some time in worship together or alone in the coming days. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. <laughs>